What's up guys, it's Kale here for how to rip and today I'm going to go through one of my beginner sessions or intermediate sessions where I coach someone and we're going to cover some of the mistakes they made and correct them so that you guys can uh, learn some lessons and hopefully take uh, that and apply it in your own surfing and improve as well. Whilst you're here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out my other surfing tutorial channel at Kale's Broccoli. I'm also on Instagram under the same name. And what else? Hey, I'm going to come to California. I'm going to be in California next month um, between the 14th of February and March 1st. And I'm going to do organize a surf meetup and also, I'm going to be screening uh, both of my documentaries, the Gut Movie and the Longevity film. So it's a great opportunity to actually catch up. Uh, so I'm going to announce those dates in probably the next video, but also in my Instagram as well. So make sure you join me there. It's going to be a heck of a time, which means good. Anyway, a lot of stuff was coming up around backhand surfing. Um, particularly on this one day, I noticed uh, one of my great clients, um, his bottom turn, as you can see, is quite off center. Now, you notice from this position that there's not going to be a lot of forward drive in his bottom turn. And the reason we want a lot of drive in the bottom turn and a lot of withheld energy in that coiled spring position is because that's actually what's going to get us up the wave and uh, into the lip in order to be able to do a turn. Whereas this sort of bending position, we're going to be expelling a lot of energy uh, rather than holding on to it and using it to put it into our turn. As a result, we, so we see the turn sort of um, fizzle, for want of a better word. Now, if we compare it to this here, this is actually me doing a bottom turn. This is actually, I would prefer to actually be lower. If I'm looking at myself and judging myself, I'd be better off being lower. But just notice how my body's quite straight and my knees are quite strong um, over the board compared to the surfer on the left here who's not. And look at the difference in the turn. It's actually quite substantial. And a similar size wave, uh, probably similar amounts of speed and power. And you can see the turn um, from the, the beginner, the intermediate surfer, obviously much less radical because that energy is just dissipated and there's not so much um, forward drive or withheld compression and power in that bottom turn. And that's really what, where we need to get if we're going to have a successful back end. Um, and this was actually picked up and emphasized throughout the, the rest of the session because I've got this wave in slow-mo here, really nice wave. The surfer, the surfer did a good job. But have a look at one thing. Have a look at the surfer's knees. Look at how they're actually bowing back and forth during the ride. That's actually a sign that they're not strong enough and they're not stable enough. They're going to be just sort of dissipating energy. Um, it's almost like hypermobility in this instance. We actually don't want to be that mobile in that context. We want to actually hold that power in that coiled spring position in our belly, in our hips, um, but also in the knees as well uh, in order to drive that energy forward into the board as opposed to letting it sort of flop out side to side. So continuing with the back side, uh, with the backside bottom turn, it, it keeps coming up. Something that we also need to work on, besides you know holding that energy in our hips and in our knees, is also actually allowing the body to open up. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but I wanted to show you something where the, the surfer that I was coaching actually took it on board in a big way and, and had a huge difference. Um, it really does make a big difference. So whilst you're actually in the bottom turn, getting low really helps you actually identify and it's easier to look up at the lip the lower you are. Um, but also flipping open this front arm, so actually um, flipping it open to be, look up like this is actually biomechanically going to better able us uh, to open up the chest. And when we open up the chest, it allows that rotation to occur. And when we're rotated, it's easier for us to look up. And when we can look up, um, that's when we can actually get that torque happening and then do, and then perform the, the twists and the turns that we're essentially is surfing. Um, so let's have a look here. The surfer paddles into this wave and uh, takes off. I'll sort of slow it down a little bit. 
and just see what you notice. Again, we see the surface stay facing very forward. Their, their face never really turns up to see what's happening. They, they know intellectually that they want to go left, that this is a left, but they're not looking that way until about there. But even then, it, it's hardly looking. So the feedback for this surfer was to actually open up the shoulders. Let's have a look at myself again doing a different turn. If we look at that position there, you can see the back of my head. Um, and that's really where every backside bottom turn should start because it just gives us a better view, a better perspective of, of where we should be hitting it. Um, and in the end, this ended up being you know quite a, a decent turn because I was able to get low, open up everything, and then hit it back down. Now, after the surfer applied the feedback, look how much better, look how much more he's traveling across the face of the wave there. Really short ride. Um, you know, very different, but have a look at the difference between those two rides. On the left was the original, on the right was the new one. Um, look at the body positioning, it looks fantastic. I'm much more happy with that because we're going to see options open up, we're going to see much more utilization of the face of the wave as well, um, and in general we're going to see just much better surfing. So, let's move on to another principle that I want to talk about, and that is utilizing the entire wave. Um, we've talked about this a lot, moving, well, I've talked about this a lot in terms of like transitioning through different parts of the wave. Um, a lot of surfers, especially as they're sort of transitioning from uh, beginner through to intermediate and then through advanced, the main differences that we see is how they use the wave. You'll see in this turn here that the surfer actually uses very little of the wave that it had to offer. This is where he actually started his maneuver. And what's the first thing you notice? You notice that he's, he's very far down the face and actually the maneuver um, would be much better off being done up the top because if you do it up the top, you're gonna actually come out of it with more speed. But what happens here is the surfer just gets caught up, all the speed is dissipated throughout the turn um, rather than actually coming out of the turn with more speed as he could have done if he had have gone up high. And the first thing we notice if we, or well, it's not the first thing we notice, but one thing we notice that the reason why this would have occurred is because, have a look at this, have a look at the eye line just there. The eye line is looking to that lower part of the wave. When I see someone doing a forehand bottom turn from the beach, I actually want to see the back of their head because then I know they're actually looking up towards the lip. And remember, the, the, the whole rule of surfing is where you look is where you go. So this surfer here, by looking only halfway up the face, is going to arrive halfway up the face. He's not going to be able to um, actually get to the top of the lip. It doesn't just happen. Okay, you've got to actually um, identify the section and make moves to get to that section. Sorry, I just had a mango. I've got, I've got like mango in my teeth. So uh, again, a good key indicator that that's working properly is to see the surfers, the back of their head as they're going up for that forehand bottom turn. So if we look at this, this is a turn of mine. It's quite an average turn, to be honest. But uh, just for reference, if you look at that position compared to the other surfer, you can see you can see the back of my head. You can't not see any part of, not even my side profile. You can only see the back of my head, and that's because I'm looking up towards the lip. And again, it's a bit of an average turn, um, but you, you get my point. Uh, again, just looking to, to a part of the wave that you want to get to is the first step. Yes, the body has to come on board as well and, and, and get involved, and that's how essentially you know the turn occurs. We get that rotation happening, we get some torque in the, in the lower body, the upper body, and that's how the turn occurs, but that's sort of the first point that we should go towards um, is actually you know that, that looking and identifying where we want to be on the wave. Now, I've just flipped, I've mirrored my clip here to be goofy so that we've got a cleaner reference. I know it's a bit, ugh. I mean, looking at myself goofy makes me want to vomit, um, but... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but if we have a look here, we can see the stark difference where we see the back of my head the whole time. I move through the different sections of the wave um, to get the turn happening. And the surfer over here, we pretty much see the front of his face the entire time. Um, so really guys, I know it's oversimplifying it, but that's I think an important thing to do, just make it easy for you. A key indicator is take off, or a key thing to remember is to take off on a wave <clears throat> and make the first thing you do to look up towards the lip. Because 95% of the time, that's where you wanna be. Um, and that's where you're be, gonna be able to pick your line from, that's where you're gonna be able to get enough power from to actually uh, do what you wanna do on the wave. 
it's pretty rare that you get a wave powerful enough to be able to take off and go straight to the bottom. And even if you do go straight to the bottom, you're not gonna do your turn down there. You're always gonna go back up to the top to do your turn because that's where the power source is, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if we continue to look at the differences here, it's quite a significant difference in terms of the turn, not just from an, an ability perspective, but from a positioning perspective. The surfer um, on the left who I was coaching just did the turn way too low. So the feedback was, hey, look to the lip and make sure that's where you want to be. Now continuing with the utilization of the entire wave, I wanted to show you this example as well, as well of, the, of the other surfer that I was coaching. Um, so this is quite a small wave, so it's a little bit unfair to use this as an example really because you've got a bigger surfer, you've got a pretty standard um, surfboard. So it's actually quite difficult to utilize the whole wave when it's this small, but just for technique and sort of intellectual purposes, we'll, we'll go through it. Notice how the surfer just stays in that one line, that lower quadrant of the wave the entire time. Um, if we look at it again, we, we see the same thing happen again. Let's compare it to, for instance, this wave here of mine. Notice how I'm moving in between these, these thirds pretty much the whole wave. And as a result, I'm, I'm driving forward and garnering a lot more speed than you would just by sitting in, for instance, the lower uh, quadrant of the wave. Um, essentially what this does, it allows us to pick up all the power and speed that the top half of the wave has to offer, but then to come down, we get to spend that speed on a big turn or, or an air reverse or, or, or whatever. Um, essentially moving in between these different areas allows us to develop and cultivate some flow and some, some forward energy on the wave. Uh, if, fair enough if, if it's a big four foot wave or, or whatever, or just a wave with a bit of meat and power, you can afford to just stand there in the one position um, and ride the whole wave if that's what you want to do. Or you can be in the barrel and obviously you're not going to be going up and down, you're going to be setting your line. Uh, but in smaller waves, in, in moderate waves, which is what we most often surf right, uh, it is really important to to get as much power out of the wave as possible. And the power zone is up that at the top half. So again, it sort of all sort of ties together in, in that um, what I tell people, as soon as you pop up, look up, look up to the top of the wave. Um, and that becomes a lot easier by popping up and staying low and then making that first oomph turn that we've talked about before um, and, and, uh, and getting things moving in that sense. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a very, very common um, sort of theme this is. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, just let me know down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for me, that'll be excellent, and come and join me on my other surfing tutorial channel as well, at Kale's Broccoli, which is also my Instagram name. Uh, if you're in California, I'm looking forward to catching up and showing you my film and going for a surf together. I think it's a really good um, good step to, to take to come and, to, to come and meet you guys. Um, cheers for tuning in.